Welcome to the Brass Monkey, one of Taipei's renowned nightlife areas for people to create memories. The Brass Monkey is a restaurant with delicious cuisines, a pub with refreshing beverages, where customers can enjoy various live sports events from around the world to be part of world events such as the Rugby World Cup 2011 at New Zealand. Brass Monkey is also known for hosting memorable party events during the year, such as Christmas and New Year's Eve parties, creating a vibrant night out in Taipei. The Brass Monkey is also a proud sponsor of the Taipei Baboons Rugby Football Club, which features players from diverse cultures and around the world. But before memories were made, sorrow struck on October 12, 2002. I'm not actually video. <laughs> the 2002 Bali bombing was the deadliest attack ever carried out in Indonesia. 202 people were killed, hundreds more were injured. Many rushed to hospital by their friends. Late one Saturday evening on a rugby tour to Bali, two members of the Taipei Baboons were sitting in the Sari Club talking about the possibility of opening a sports bar in Taiwan. Two friends, Peter Krawowski, successful American entrepreneur and longtime resident of Taiwan, and Max Murphy, a recent Australian arrival to Taiwan from Shanghai, talked into the night over a few bintangs while the other team members danced and drank around them. The date was October 12, 2002. Moments later, two terrorist bombs ripped through Paddy's Bar and Asari Club killing 202 people and wounding hundreds more. Five members of the Taipei Baboons touring squad lost their lives. Over two months later, Max called and asked, Peter, do you remember what we were talking about in Asari Club? Let's do it. Six longtime friends and Taipei residents from Australia, Canada, England, New Zealand, and the USA joined Max and Peter as partners in the project. They came from various walks of life, bringing different skills and contributions to the venture. And the Brass Monkey came to life on February 28, 2003. And this is their story. Okay, I'm uh, Max Murphy. I opened the, uh, the Brass Monkey with a couple of mates from the rugby club about uh, nine years ago now, coming up nine years. Uh, I'm also a member of the Taipei Baboons Rugby Club, and I've been a member of them for about the last 10 years. Uh, well, I was given. Uh, Started the post of the, uh, the president of this club, the, the Baboons Rugby Club. Um, started that in August of this year. Um, I, I I've only been doing this job for uh, five months now, five months or so. Uh, previously, Bernie uh, Bernie Moore was the president. Um, I've been in Taiwan for 17 years, and um, I currently work at uh, J.P. Morgan Securities. And I've been there for 12 years, and um, I, I feel, you know, this is my home now, Taiwan. So it's good, good to be part of this club. When I first came to Taiwan, I never really imagined that I was going to open a, a, a bar here. I came over originally to, um, to, to work in the printed circuit board industry. And uh, it turned out that printed circuit board industry was incredibly boring. And uh, I wasn't really sure I was going to stay in the industry. And then uh, skip forward a few months, of course, the, as you know, the Bali bomb happened, right? Um, and after that, I thought, you know, I really want to do something I'm going to really enjoy doing. So I, I spoke, to, uh, spoke to some friends and, and uh, you know, came up with the idea of a monkey and, and just did it. We were actually talking about it before before the bomb, and then when the bomb went off, it just kind of, you know, we thought, let's do it. 
Obviously, we were over there, of course, on the on the the, uh, for the, the Bali Tens competition. So there's about 20 or 24 teams involved in that. And of course, you play on the Saturday. Uh, we played about three or four games. I think we lost a couple, won a couple. Um, so it's a pretty good day. You know, we went to have uh, went to have beers by the pool and and whatnot, and, and out for dinner after that, and then, uh, of course, you know, being a, being a rugby tour, we thought we'd keep going out and, and ended up going to the Sari Club that night. Like, uh, and that's obviously when, when the bomb went off. Peter, uh, from the, also a member of Taipei Baboons, he's opened a couple of restaurants before, so he was very, uh, he was, well, he had a lot of experience in opening restaurants here, and so that bit was kind of a breeze. I didn't really do much. I, I more came up with the concept than, than was the opening general manager. Yeah, but I mean, the good thing about it was it could have NFL, we could have uh, basketball, we could have UFC on the big screen. And we managed to combine, combine the sports with uh, parties. So it, either they're theme parties or ladies nights. The, the brass monkey, the concept in my head was uh, to be a sports and party bar. That was the, that was gonna be the main focus. And uh, I think we've successfully kept. To... During those big events, we have, have an advantage uh, over other bars in that we, we actually have a nice place, nice big place with a nice, uh, the, you know, a high roof, a nice big screen. Um, and we really concentrate on making it an event. You know, we publish schedules beforehand. We, you know, have the posters up. We have uh, tipping competitions going, so you can guess the winners. And, and you know, uh, we encourage people to be loud. And on the day, we try and build it up. You know, come on, make some noise if you're going for England. Make some noise if you're going for France. You know, try and and just add that energy that that uh, I think really only only the monkey can do. We are a sports bar that does parties, um, and I think that makes a big difference for when we do events. We we don't, you know, we yeah, we're more of a bar that puts on parties than a than a party place, you know. And I, I think that gives gives our events kind of a more I wouldn't say homely feel, but a more a closer feel rather than oh, we're just a nightclub that opens opens every night. Um, I think that makes a big difference to the to the atmosphere. Yeah, well, sometimes we'll donate a portion of the night's income to, to the charities. We do that for for a number of animal charities around Taiwan. We also do work with the Harmony Home, uh, AIDS, HIV, Orphanage. And, uh, you know, it's great because we can obviously help people and, and, you know, we're in a position to do so. So it's really the least we can do. And uh, another thing we do is, of course, we sponsor teams like the Taipei Baboons. The Taiwan Celts uh, Gaelic football team. We sponsor the Taiwan Celts football team, and we also I think sponsor the, uh, the the ice hockey league here in Taiwan. So that's also you know putting back into the community somehow. But you know I think being a bar in an expat society, it's it's kind of a, a, a good thing you can do. I mean, having said that, we also support a lot of local you know charities and whatnot. Uh, so basically, the HSBC uh, charity dinner. It's an annual event we do. The first one we actually did was with Nick Far Jones, and that was in 2003, right after the right after the bomb, um, where Nick actually volunteered his time to come over and and uh, and do a speech. I mean, we didn't pay for his airfare, we didn't pay for any speaking fee or anything. He came over and we did a uh, an event combined with the the Anz Bar, so the Australia New Zealand Business Association. And who is also who we opened the original, you know, Bali Trust Fund with. So the reason for that dinner and the reason for the original Bali Trust Fund was to uh, was to help immediately help, you know, our victims with uh, burns and, and you know repatriation and uh, included getting families over here to, in Taiwan to visit, you know, uh, families of people that, that were that are killed. So I think. Uh, Craig's family came over, Godfrey's family came over uh, to get a sense of closure, I guess, and um, also to help out, you know, Monet in particular had, you know, major burns, and so, you know, even as, as much as far as last year, we were still paying, you know, substantial sums of money to help him out. So that was what it was set up for. Now it's, it's still helping that in a little way, but it's also morphed into helping uh, Jack Bill, who broke his neck in, a, in an accident. 
rugby accident uh, two years ago, who's now uh, a quadriplegic from the neck down. So a lot of money's gone to helping him with his medical costs, helping his family, helping him be able to set up a house where he can go home and spend time with his family and whatnot, rather than being stuck in a hospital. And also helped other stuff, like we just recently sponsored the Aboriginal uh, baseball tournament for children. They have a, a yearly tournament in Hualien for, for disadvantaged Aboriginal children, which we, we were able to sponsor. Well, it's kind of a spontaneous thing. We don't plan to do, you know, really, we just, it's more of a, a bunch of friends getting together to to remember guys, you know, our, our friends um, we've lost and to let the new baboons or people that weren't there, you know, get an idea of what the spirit of the club is about and how important this event was to, you know, to, to the club itself. Um, yeah, so we just basically get around, tell a few stories and, and have a beer. You know, it's nothing too intense. Well, actually, it's pretty intense, but uh, it's not. It's not you know a planned memorial event, so to speak. Next year we'll be going back to Bali for the tenth year, though. So I imagine that would be a bit more extravagant. Not as much as they let us do. I mean, Lomu's the Taipei Rugby Union is doing a great job with the tournament that the baboons are in now, and I honestly think it's it's our role in helping rugby is to obviously help the baboons, but to help people like Lomo who have, you know, the ideas and who have the have the uh, determination to actually make these events happen and we can help, you know, by sponsoring ourselves but also the you know, HSBC, uh, the New Zealand Trade 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 Development Centre, uh, uh, China Airlines have all been great sponsors of our events and we can help Lomo make those links to, you know, help him help him, you know, make tournaments like this improve, help them get better and better. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty much just helping out where I can at the moment. I think, you know, people like Leakey and Peter are doing a great job in the club. Um, you know, Leakey's come on board as president and he's brought a lot of uh, his own determination and passion for the game and it's, it's, you know, been working, taking over from Bernie there who, who started the ball rolling and, um, yeah, and, and Leakey's also brought his own passion and I think that's the main reason we, we're getting a lot of members is because we've got this drive from people like Peter Burney and, uh, and uh, Leakey. Is there anyone I forgot? Uh, yeah, no, that's all great. I think the more the, what rugby in Taiwan needs is more tournaments, more well-organized, serious and not so serious tournaments. So I think I really think uh, touch rugby is, is one of the keys to growing the sport here because touch is a very easy introduction for you know, for, for kids, for girls, and people who maybe are a little bit tentative about the contact, I think that's a big area of opportunity. But, you know, once they get into that, the more competitions we have, the more clubs we have for, for uh, once they, for, for kids and, and people once they leave school, the, the more it will grow, keeping them interested. Uh, yeah, the, the Livet, um, which has become the brass making slogan, is basically comes from uh, one of the guy's dads, James Hardman, his dad. Uh, when James was killed in the bombing and uh, we had, we had, it, was, it was crazy time after the bomb because there was, you know, so many people killed, there was all these different thing, people involved, both, you know, Australian government, all the authorities in Bali and, you know, tons of individuals and it, there used to be these quite chaotic meetings in the in the Hard Rock Hotel actually and uh, I think we just confirmed we just identified James's body and we had to meet James's parents which of course was pretty emotional and uh, and he we you know said hello and and, whatnot, and, uh, and then as we were I can't remember exactly what we spoke about in that conversation, but as we were walking away, or he was sorry, as he was walking away, he, we watched him walk off and he turned, stopped in his tracks and he turned around and pointed at us and he just said, live it guys, just live it. And then he kept walking. So yeah, that was pretty, uh, I don't know, pretty memorable.
memorable moment of the whole uh, Bali tragedy. Yeah, I, I do think the brass monkey takes on uh, you know a special, very special meaning, not just to the owners and myself, but to all of us. You know, it's it, in a, in a way it it it, it, uh, it's a stand against terrorists. It's a stand against what happened. I mean, we could have come back and you know become depressed or whatever. People handle it in their different ways. Um, you know, we we focused on creating the monkey and making it into a into a you know fantastic place and uh, you know you just can't let them win you just gotta keep going and, and uh, yeah live it uh, I mean I think obviously people have different degrees of trouble but one of the things I learned from that whole experience was uh, people usually have a lot bigger troubles than you do and there's always you know things I think we've got it pretty good and uh, you know I think live it and don't sweat the small stuff you know, there's a lot of bigger issues out there than what we go through. Okay, and the viewers over in Taiwan, what's your message for them? What, those who are keen to play rugby or keen to actually just be part of the rugby community here? Oh, I'd say do it. I mean, we encourage both players and non-players. I mean, we've got, you know, you can pretty much get a game whether you've never played rugby before or you're the best rugby player in, in Taiwan. Uh, we, yeah, there's always a position for you in rugby. One of the great things about rugby is, you know, you we've got a position for the tallest guy. We've got a position for the, you know, the biggest guy. We've got a position for the fastest guy. I mean, rugby is kind of one of the only sports where you do have, uh, you know, a, a position for almost every body shape there is. And we also encourage girls to play. They don't have to play contact, but they can come and play touch. Touch is a very fast. Um, non-contact form of the game and it's 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 incredible fun so i'd say encourage you to get involved i mean even if it's just coming and having beers with the boys after the game or, or watching it watching the games it's still you know you're out if you're an expat out here if you i've always said that when you play rugby whenever I, i've played rugby for a few cities now like beijing shanghai taipei etc and when, when you turn up in a city to play rugby, you just go to a bar and say, where's the, where's the local rugby club? And you'll find them, and instantly you've got like, you know, 30, 20, 30 friends. Uh, does, and, and one of the great things about rugby also is, you know, those 20, 30 friends are probably Australians, New Zealanders, English, French, uh, Fijians, Nauruans, uh, you know, they could be from anywhere, Canadians, USA, we've got all of those guys in our, in our rugby team and it's one of the, it's a very unique experience that rugby can give you. Burns Club, I've only been a part of the Burns Club for three years and uh, the reason why I joined the club was after my, my father passed away. My father was an avid sportsman, um, I was a big rugby player when I was younger and I thought this was a great way in and, and um, they helped me and the Brass Monkey has been a, a, a very good supporter of this club and as being becoming the president I've, I've come to be much clearer on why that is. Um, there's a lot of lot, lot, a lot behind the scenes that uh, people don't, don't see. We have a mutual uh, relationship. Um, this Brass Monkey was, was started in uh, 2002 after the Bali bombing, uh, and that's the, one of the core, uh, you know, core, core cores of this club. Um, and I think through that, that it's just developed a culture where a lot of people from the rugby club come here, and um, every year they're, they're behind us in what we do. Uh, of course, we, are, we, we also help them. Uh, through various events and charities, and um, I think it's 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 a very good mutual relationship, you know, where we can both benefit. Well, um, we we have a charity uh, dinner every year. Um, we have a Bali Trust, uh, a Bali Memorial, um, that that was developed after the Bali bombing, and now every year around uh, December time we have a charity dinner in the Far Eastern Hotel where we invite a special guest. This year was John Bentley um, in 2010. It was uh, John Kerwin, uh, the former All, All Black Star. 
and culture Japan and uh, that, that helps to generate a lot of money for that particular uh, charity and also other charities that we, we support including Harmony Home which is the, the, orphanage, the AIDS orphanage in Taipei which uh, I think they are very very grateful for our, for our support and uh, I feel it's an honour that we can actually support uh, an organisation such as that. Baboons. Uh, for the first time, as far as I remember, I mean, I heard they had good clubs in the past. Um, just as an, uh, 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 a point there, I used to come here frequently and watch the baboons uh, coming in, and I didn't particularly think they were. Uh, I didn't really have much much to say about them, but I gradually learned from uh, being part of this club. There's a lot of nice guys here. That I probably mis misunderstood the whole whole thing. Right now, uh, since I joined, we, we, were, we, we were winning very much. We won the odd game. In the competitions, we, we didn't win a game until this year. This year was the first year we won a match. Uh, now we've won three games. We've come second in the league. Uh, we're on a roll. We're going to be in the semi-final on the January the 7th. And uh, it's looking good. Uh, but this is where the, the the big matches start and um, unfortunately um, we're in the Christmas season so everybody's enjoying themselves whereas the Taiwanese um, they start their celebrations at Chinese New Year which is after the tournament so I'm hoping that our guys are gonna get off the get up and start doing some work in a few days we see the brass monkey as a tribute to those that lost their lives on that October evening and hope that it provides the people of Taipei and its visitors with a place to enjoy their favorite sports, party hard, or just hang out with friends and our great staff. This is their story. Live it. We are living it. Are you? <laughs>